Is this rigid 4x24 benchtop sander any good? I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself or one of my workbenches, there's a link in the description of this video down below where you can go purchase plans and download them instantaneously 24-7, 365. In a previous video, I asked for your advice, your recommendations on a bench top sander. I specifically wanted a belt sander and a disc sander, and I wanted a heavy unit, one that was heavy enough when I set it on the bench top that it didn't move around, I didn't need to connect it, and that when I worked on it, it would be really stable. What I was trying to replace was a 4x24 belt sander that I would just put on my bench top and clamp it down, and I had a few jigs to do that. I got rid of that when I was cleaning out some of my tools going to more battery tools, and I was planning on picking up a 4x24 battery sander that I was going to then use on the bench top as well as in some of the portable applications. Well, I didn't do my homework ahead of time and discovered there are no 4x24 battery operated belt sanders. At least I couldn't find one. And I'm bound and determined to stick with one of two battery systems, either Festool, they don't make one, or DeWalt, and they don't make one. So then I decided, okay, if I'm going to have to go back to a corded unit, I'm going to go ahead and get one that is a bench top, that's a, that it's a fixed machine and would, would offer me more flexibility than a handheld belt sander just clamped down. So I wasn't thinking real clearly and I said specifically I wanted a belt sander with a disc. You gave me a lot of great recommendations and I looked them up, I read the reviews, I looked at videos on their operation and then I happened to live just a few blocks from a Grizzly store and they have a lot of machinery, a lot of sanders that sort of fit that uh, definition. And so I went there, probably spent an hour looking at all the different ones and most of them had the belt itself would, would flip down flat or flip up vertical and then they would have a, a disc you know you most of them had a six or eight inch disc on the side working off the same motor and I kept thinking oh, that's what I wanted but as I looked at it more and more I realized that the the belt wouldn't go in the direction I wanted I wanted the belt to be vertical I wanted to work against the belt this way the way I did with my head held, handheld sander, belt sander, which I would clamp on the bench that way. And so then I started looking around with the, the new criteria and I discovered this rigid. And I read some reviews and I looked at it and it really uh, made a lot of sense. The, the belt is a four by 24, so I can use, I have a good collection of 4x24 disc, when I got rid of my sander, I only supplied a couple of, 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 of the belts and I kept the rest of them. So I have a good inventory of these 3M discs and they drop right on. So I have all different, this happens to be 80 grit, but I have all different grits and it's very easy just to swap it by flipping this lever. The Rigid does not have a disc but it does offer a spindle. It's got a variety of spindle sizes. This pops off no tooling required and the spindles drop on. It has built-in dust collection and everything is stored on board. They do a really nice job of putting everything underneath this cantilever shelf and then the uh, belt drive system itself will store on the backside. And what's nice about this is with the weight and the size of it, I was able to take my cradle design, the Polk Smart Cradle, the one that I use for my table saws, and I made one specifically to fit this. So this hangs it off my bench and makes it very comfortable to use. But I do lift it off of this, it's not connected to the cradle, and I take it and have a spot in the trailer that I store it. It's lightweight, 
but yet it's still very stable. So it's easy for me to move in and out and I don't have to think twice, oh, that's too heavy. I just don't want to get it out right now. No, I grabbed this just the way I would grab a handheld tool. The table here, the working table, also works as uh, for angles if you want to do some angle sanding. And it doubles to keep all of the accessories in place when I'm moving it. First couple of times I didn't realize that and I picked it up and some things fell off. But just by simply turning this knob on the side, I can drop this all the way down, lock it in, and then all of the accessories are locked in and so they don't fall out when I'm tipping it up to put it up on the shelf. Operating this benchtop belt sander is really simple. After I set it up in the cradle, I grab my vacuum hose, my floater hose that goes from the router, goes to the miter saw, and then I move it over to here. I have all of those tools plugged into the vacuum with one of those squids so that there's a single power point. So when I turn on any of these, the vacuum hose will come on. Now I do have a splitter with a second vacuum hose that's connected to the table saw, so the table saw is always on. So it's, it's nice that I've got the dust collection. It works marginally okay. It, it, it takes away enough of it that makes it worthwhile to hook up the hose. The next thing is just to determine what belt I want to use. And, and there are no tools to change the belt. In this case, I have an 80 grit. And all I have to do is drop it on, flip this lever, and then there's a knob here with a plus and minus and that will center the belt. So once I turn the machine on, it'll start to move and I can dial this in until it stays in place. And you'll see when I turn it on, it's not only a four x 24 belt sander, but it oscillates. If I have an angle to sand, or I wanna put a chamfer on a piece of stock, it's just a matter of dropping the bench itself down to whatever angle. There's some detents, but I figure out what the one I want, lock it down. Again, no tools to change any of the operation. The bracket has detents on it at 45, 30, 22 and a half, 15, zero. I can also stop anywhere along the way. There is a gauge here, so if I wanna set a specific angle, I can just set it on that to the pointer and lock it in. It also has a stop that mounts right here on the top so that if I'm doing narrow stock and I'm worried about it kicking on me, I can put it right up against this and just push it in. I don't use this very often, but I wanted it on the tool so that I could grab it when I needed it. And there was not really a good place to store it. I'm surprised they didn't, didn't have a little slot for it somewhere. But what I found was that with the cutout here, I can drop this over the vacuum port and then on the bench top itself, I just drilled a hole and tapped it. So I used the same mounting screw. That keeps the stop and the screw to mount it from getting lost and also at a convenient location when I need to put it on. I haven't had a need to use the spindles yet and there's a variety of sizes. Rigid includes sandpaper and the mounts for two inch, inch and a half, one inch, three quarter, and one half spindles, as well as the various pieces you'll need for these different sizes. To swap it out, again, it's toolless and it's quick. There's a knob here with a lock emblem on it, and you just turn it toward the unlock, spin it off, and the entire four x 24 oscillating belt sander mechanism pops off, and it's got a storage location on the back. There's a plate it pops out and that covers where the spindle goes and then this drops back in that same location. Then all I need to do is grab the proper ring size for the spindle that I'm using, drop it in, and then drop the spindle on, and then grab the proper top washer, this one would be the larger one, drop it on the top, and then using the same screw that mounts the 4x24 oscillating belt sander goes back on here and as I tighten this on it puts pressure down 
on this rubber cylinder, which uh, spreads it out, and that's what tightens up the sandpaper. So it's pretty easy to change the sandpaper with it. In this mode here, I can just slide it off and put on a new, a new piece or the proper uh, grit that I want. So this is an 80. Just drop it on, get it to the right location, and then tighten it, and now the sandpaper stays in place. I've been using it for a couple of months now, and I give it a thumbs up. It's a great value. The price is excellent. You get everything you need to start. Of course, you can buy more sandpaper to fit your personal needs. I love that everything about it is toolless for changing the operation. It just makes the workflow very efficient and very fluid. If I didn't already own it with what I know about it now, I'd buy it again. If you enjoy these tool reviews, then be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And remember when you subscribe to ring that bell so you'll know when I put up a new video. And if you get a chance, share this channel with somebody you know to help me grow my subscriber base. Also, if you'd like to support the channel so I can make more of these videos, you can of course purchase a set of plans from us or you can use our store where we have some affiliate links. If you use those affiliate links to purchase tools and materials that we recommend, then they will share a little bit with us and they won't charge you any extra. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.